Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Mapping the Cloud Atlas on the Cloud Adoption Journey. My name's Claire Cox. I work on the business development team here at ScotLogic. Uh, for those of you who don't know who we are, we're a technology consultancy that specializes in delivering bespoke software solutions for our clients, primarily in the financial services sector. I'll shortly be handing you over to my colleague, James Dunkley, a senior technical architect here at ScotLogic. If you missed the first webinar that James did for us in this series, which is about debunking cloud myths, you can find a link to this at the end of the webinar. You can also download a copy of today's slides, which are available in the handout section. Uh, we'd like these webinars to be as interactive as possible. So if you have any questions, please do send them in by writing them in the question box and we'll take as many as we can at the end. So without further ado, I'll pass you over to James. Hi, thank you for joining us today. Um, so the agenda today it, for today's webinar is to provide some guidance for your business's cloud adoption journey. We're going to start with a look at methodologies for this transition at a business level uh, before then moving into some frameworks to look at it at a more workload level. A very quick introduction to who I am. Um, I'm a technical architect here at ScotLogic. I've been part of ScotLogic for the last four and a half years and I'm part of our technical leadership group. I've led our London Cloud Study Group over the last three years and have recently and recently had the opportunity to work on various client projects using the three biggest cloud providers, AWS, Azure and GCP. I personally have a particular interest in data analytics and data science and I've recently spent a fair amount of time working with serverless technologies and achieving amazing results in a very short period of time and I think they're a fantastic vibe for the way things are going to go in the future in the cloud. So in the last webinar, we talked about some of the myths and fears that might cause you not to want to move to the cloud. Today, we're assuming that your business has made the decision that you want to move into the cloud. This is not a small decision. It's going to lead to big changes across the business, a shift in how the technologies are obtained, used and managed. Changes to how to operations run the technology estate, um, as well as changes to how finance budgets and manages the payments of the estate, and even when those payments are made, whether it's upfront or in demand of use. The goal of the move to the cloud is generally to improve business agility and reduce costs, to be able to respond quickly to changes in the business landscape. The journey that the business needs to go on will be different for every different organization. First and foremost, you're going to need to know and understand where you currently are and have an idea of at least what where you want to get to. <clears throat> Fundamentally, it's not just an IT change. To be successful, it's going to potentially need some fundamental changes across the whole organization. Because of this, you're, need, you're going to need support from the top all the way down to the actual people doing the engineering work. You may need changes in finance around the billing and management of projects. You may need changes in HR to help staff get the training and shape of the role they need to do their new job. For a cloud adoption, many of these things will be needed to make it a success. One thing that can happen and often does, and often does, is people with expertise within the business get impatient. They want to move to the cloud and take advantage of what it offers and get going as quickly as possible. This can lead to multiple silos of adoption within an organization, different projects and different teams, using different approaches to get into the cloud, even potentially using completely different cloud providers. This can often happen because there are bottlenecks and frustrations with the internal processes or multiple failed attempts already to get onto the cloud. One major problem with this is it leads to an estate within which it is very difficult to ensure that policies such as data protection and security are followed consistently across the entire business. Additionally, the potential benefits the cloud can give of reducing operational complexity and, and difficulties won't be realized in these scenarios. Clearly, it's much better to take a wider, more controlled approach to moving to the cloud. There are two common approaches that often occur when you're thinking about moving the organization. One route is the transformational top-down approach. Often this is driven by an executive sponsor. It's normally the business is already the business or the executive has already accepted the benefits and advantages that the cloud will 
will bring. And so they begin a large scale program of transformation across the organization. Everyone and everything is going to move. They might want to move their entire data center as a whole to the cloud. This approach has some difficulties. For one thing, you don't necessarily have all the information and all the skills you need at the beginning um, that you will need for a successful cloud adoption. And it's also not necessarily bought into by the individuals or teams. And the one size fits all approach certainly doesn't actually fit all. Another approach that often happens is this grassroots method. It can come from some subject matter experts, either internal staff or new joiners to the business who have cloud experience. It might be a software developer or a cloud architect. They know, they know and can see all the benefits that the cloud would give by moving their applications to it. They'd move their proof of concept and if successful, they then attempt to drive and get adoption across the business by people seeing the success. However, without top level sponsorship, this can lead to the siloed adoption we said before. So one thing, one approach I would recommend is a combination of these two. Getting top level, top level agreement to create a cloud center of excellence within the organization. These will be, think about, they will think as a group about the business change needed while a small group of people leads by example. Generally, you'll start with a proof of concept, then, then you're gonna to to use that to evangelize and cause the wider transformation change the business wants. You start with a small project which will deliver real value and to the business that can be delivered quickly and become a shining example of the move. It shouldn't be such a trivial project that no everyone just that's no interest. It should be something reasonably significant but not so complicated it's going to take forever to get there. You want to get some small wins that you can get off the, so you can get the group off the ground quickly and get results that the business can see. In order to do this, you want to create a small cross-functional team, including security, infrastructure, and application development. Um, you're going to need to involve and get the buy-in of senior leadership. They should be the ones driving the creation of the center, but not necessarily doing all the work. At the end of the day, it's the senior leadership who is going to need to accept the proof of concept and then drive it across the business for the adoption to become successful. The goals of the center are to create reusable patterns and policies. You want to have security and data protection built in from the very beginning of all the work you do in the cloud. It's very important. Finally, the job of the center of excellence as it gets success, when successful will be to evangelize the approach across the business. A well-publicized proof of concept will generate interest and generate more people wanting to come onto the cloud rather than being forced onto the cloud. The first step to create is to build the team. You want to start with a small number of people. The concept of a two pizza team is often said. A team that can be fed on two pizzas is generally around the right kind of size for this, this group. It needs to be cross-functional and across the different domains. They'll need to have everything from security, application developments and infrastructure, as we mentioned, as well as the operations and support aspects of the business. In general, you, I would recommend this comes from internal hiring where possible. You've got people who know your business and want to make the move a success. They're a lot easier to get the right, correct direction if they already know your business, rather than bringing in cloud experts from outside who might not know everything about the organization. The team shouldn't be afraid to make mistakes. They're going to. At the end of the day, this is a journey they are on. It isn't an instant switch. People don't know how to go straight onto the cloud and all the best practices. But at the opposite end of the spectrum, you shouldn't be so obsessed with the search for perfection. You do want to deliver some quick wins. You don't have to get it right straight away, you can iterate. But the quicker you get rewards back to the business by delivering some smaller success, the, the lower the nerves will be within the organization of the transformation that's coming. As a rule, the members of the team will need to have a few key characteristics. They should be happy to experiment. They're going to try lots of different things. And if it goes right, great. But if it fails, they shouldn't worry. But they should be able to learn from their mistakes and move on and try a new thing. They shouldn't be stuck with the current status quo in the business. They should be empowered to make changes and help the business change. They need to be able to take a concept from the very idea stage all the way through to implementation and getting it live into production.
The goal of the center is to help the whole business grow. So they must also understand that they are not delivering it for them. They're delivering it for the entire organization and they need to understand the needs of the other people. And finally, we want them to be able to influence and inspire others. The goal of this team is not the first initial project, it's to cause others to be able to do things as well. For the center, the goals are quite wide ranging. They want to deliver quick wins to get into production easily. As we said, this will lower, lower fears within the organization and help with general senior leadership buy-in. Along the process, they're going to build some example architectures of how their workloads they move that others should be able to learn from. They should develop opinionated blueprints for your organization. All of the big providers provide best practice blueprints available that you can download to start from, but these are general ones for generally all organizations. The idea of the center will be to take and build on top of these and create a real opinionated place that people can start from that is aligned with the business's goals and ambitions. The processes they use to release that first proof, first proof of concepts should be generally repeatable and they should be learning and making sure that they can use these processes to help other um, workloads within the organization move uh, into the cloud. Additionally, the more consistent they are, the more the operational overheads will be lowered as you get more things into the cloud. In order to encourage consistency, automation can help. The team should evangelize automation where they can, modernizing internal processes and working towards the ideals of continuous integration and continuous deployment. You'll be able to do much more with a lot less if you get this working right. And it's a big win, but one that people will be scared of. But generally, the results for the business are huge and also in longer term for the people who've learned how to do the automation. Once a, successful, once a successful proof of concepts have been completed and the team have learned from it, then the goal changes slightly. It's to go out and teach the rest of the organization. The successes the project has had should be promoted and recognized across the organization with roadshows and webinars, and whatever you need to promote some of the things that have been achieved. Even moving a small block from a data, from a data center into the cloud is still a great stepping stone and showcasing the results and what was learned is important. You want to look at the best practices and processes that came as you were doing this. Document and blog these internally. Spread the knowledge around all the other teams. One slightly harder solution can be to second the members of the team in the center into other teams and then help those teams learn from the direct experience those members have. Another option is instead to kind of grow the center, bring other projects into the center. However, the problem with this is the center itself can then become a bottleneck and you need to be cautious on that and make sure you scale it in the appropriate way. So while, the, while all this is going on, the business has to prepare for the change. One approach to help the business prepare for this change is the cloud adoption framework. This is a way of thinking that was put together by AWS to help move people move to their cloud, but it's applicable to any of the providers. The goal is to engage the stakeholders from their own perspective. So there are four steps. First, you need to identify who the key stakeholders are to a cloud migration. Next, you need to understand the concerns and questions they have, which could delay this move. Using this understanding, then working, you need to identify the skills and processes that need to be updated within the business to address these concerns. And finally, working with the stakeholders, you want to create a plan as part of the center to cover these processes and skills and ensure that they will be happy with the results. The idea is to think from six perspectives. First and foremost, the business view. The goal of this transformation is to deliver business results. So we want to make sure that all the transformations is aligned with these business goals. Additionally, understanding the economics of the cloud. They are very different between what you're used to in a, a, a normal data center. Next, we need to think about people. The organizations and structures within the business may need to be changed. The cloud represents a huge skill shift and staff may need to be given resources and help to prepare for this change and additional skills they need to gather. The governance view is to think more on the project and program management side of the business. How should the processes work? How will you measure the impact on the business and the results it gathers? 
the platform perspective is now starting to think about the design and build that you need to do within the cloud. The cloud architectures represent a different, fundamental different architecture, and you'll need to change from how you're used to working within a data center. Security is always the big one. It should be the first job of everybody working in the cloud. You really need to understand your current internal processes and guidance that the business uses, and, I, and incorporate those at a minimum into the patterns you're going to use in the cloud. You want to develop controls that can be used across the business and define the strategy and program of work to deliver this. Moving to the cloud also is going to result in a new operational landscape, replacing the technology and systems that people have learned to use, which are currently in place. They're going to need time to learn and understand how to work in the cloud, how to think about high availability and disaster recovery, how to deal with the SLAs and the uptime that the cloud guarantees will also require you to think about how you shape your application. And from these perspectives, hopefully you can drive the business in the changes you need. I think this is actually a good time to ask you a question. Claire, I believe we have a poll. We do, James. Yeah, let me just uh, launch this poll now. So the question that we're asking you is, have you tried setting up a cloud center of excellence? So we'll give you just a minute now. If you can select one of these, your options are, yes, we've tried setting up a cloud center of excellence and it's working well. Yes, but we're having some challenges. No, but we're considering it. We've tried and failed or we haven't considered it. So I can see some people are voting now. I'm just gonna give you a few more seconds just to get your votes in. It's quite interesting actually seeing some of these votes come in and, uh, and quite important for us too, because as James will probably tell you later, he's gonna be working on a white paper talking about setting up a cloud center of excellence. So your, uh, your, views here about where you're at in this journey are quite important to us. So I'm going to close the poll now and share the results with you. And uh, James, you can see the results on your screen. Everybody can see the results on their screen. Oh, James can't <laughs> see the results. So I'm going to read them out for James. So, um, so the results are 13% of people have said yes, and it's working well. 25% of people have said yes, but they're having some challenges. Another 25% say no, but they're considering it. 13% have said they've tried and failed, and another 25% saying we haven't considered it. So let me hide that poll, and then I can pass you back to James. Cool, thank you for that. That'll help us think about how we structure the white paper um, when we come to write it. Um, so moving onwards from the business perspective, now I want to move down to a slightly lower level and think about moving a workload to the cloud. We've talked about getting the business ready and the, the next kind of two frameworks we're going to talk around are more about moving a specific workload into the cloud. The first is the six R's and then finally we'll talk about being well architected. So the six R's is a concept that was first introduced created by Gartner in the 2010s, originally as the five R's. They were, they were adapted by AWS into the six R's, but again, these are applicable for all the cloud providers. Well, the first thing to do whenever you're moving a workload to the cloud is preparation and planning. You need to fully understand exactly what it is and how you're going to move it. Next, what are the potential offerings that the cloud has to give you? For each workload, you consider the shape it should take in the cloud, and this will let you understand what the appropriate migration strategy should be. The goal, as always, is to maximize the value from the cloud by minimizing time, effort, cost, and risk. The six strategies I'm just gonna talk over range from retire or retain all the way through to fully refactoring the application. We're gonna look at each one in a little bit more detail now. So the first, we start with the first two, retain or retire. These are technically not migrating the workloads to the cloud. They're more passive strategies, but should always be considered if appropriate. You may have major investments in the data center and the application may be covering all the all the all current needs, in which case you may choose to retain it as is. A second option is to assess if the application is, is even needed anymore. It may be legacy and it may be possible to retire it as a whole. Next, you could repurchase the application. 
This means going off and buying a new cloud-based version of it, of the application, or even a completely different application to cover the same business needs. This could be particularly re relevant if the current application is not covering the business's own needs. It's an opportunity to switch over and get the new feature set. It's often a quick option with little cost or extra skill needed. Rehosting is a slightly larger option. This is to take the workload as it is and lift and shift it to the cloud. Doing this, you are unlikely to realize the large amounts of sa cost savings or other cloud gains. However, it can be a very good first step to getting into the cloud. It starts to reduce your dependency on the on-premise data center and starts getting more and more things into the cloud. A slightly larger option is to reef platform. This is to make small adjustments to the application, take, take advantage of easy wins by moving to the cloud. A good example of this would be, for example, moving from an old on-premise database server, you could, instead of putting a new cloud data, cloud um, run server, use a more on-demand service, such as SQL Azure or AWS Aurora, and a hosted database service. You may need to adjust the application to do this, but you're reducing some of your operational dependencies. You might choose to attempt to adjust the application at this point to allow it to scale more elastically and take some advantage of the cloud's flexibility to scale up and scale down quickly. The effort and cost of this move is obviously higher, but the rewards also start to be significantly higher too. The largest and riskiest option is to fully refactor the application to be cloud native. You might consider containers and microservices, for example. However, you're going to be effectively rebuilding the application almost from scratch again. This could potentially be a huge amount of work. There will possibly probably be a tipping point at which point it is worth doing, where the cloud native benefits and costs outweigh the risk and costs of this development time. However, you must also factor in the delay in return on your investment and the fact that there may be long pause in delivering new business value or features. If you can work out a way to do this such that you're still able to deliver continued value and iteration, I would generally recommend that as well. Having moved an application to the cloud, the next question is how well do you assess how well do you assess how well it's suited to running in the environment you've created. Again, AWS created a framework called the Well Architecture Framework. The principles are true for all of the providers again. However, the specific questions and wording may be different in each case. The, the idea is to understand the advantages and disadvantages of the architecture design you've chosen. It's aimed at technical stuff and is expressed as a set of questions that you answer to understand how close to best practice you've become. They view it in five different pillars. First, operational excellence. How easy is the application to run and maintain in the cloud? How well is it to continually deliver updates and patches? Secondly, security. Back again, it's always here. You mustn't ignore it and it must be first and foremost. How is the system conforming to all the security standards and requirements needed for the data that you are hosting in it? The risks must be assessed and reviewed. Next, reliability. You must, in general, you should assume things will fail. They always do. Does the application have sufficient resilience and high availability to ensure that it can cope with this for the business's needs? In the event of a disaster recovery, is the time taken to recover the data quick enough? Is the ability to get the operation up and running again quick enough? All of these things need to be assessed and thought of. Performance efficiency. Are you actually using all the resources you've chosen to allocate and are you using them effectively? This actually leads on to the last pillar, which is cost optimization. The goal, as always, is to deliver the business value at the lowest price point. And again, we need to think about if we are achieving that. Using the equipment efficiently will help in this, but also questioning whether you're using the correct machines and equipment will also partly help in the cost optimization. Assessing a workload from these perspectives will help ensure it's well built and well suited to running in the cloud environment. The final area I want to touch on is creating a DevOps culture. A lot of the processes and principles for a successful cloud migration are well aligned with the processes of DevOps. The creation of cross-practice teams that work well together is shared by DevOps. The DevOps term refers to a whole set of cultural philosophies, practices, and technologies. The principles of shared responsibility, agility, transparency, and lowered risk through automation have generally proven to be crucial to moving any complicated project into the cloud. 
Additionally, I would say you must include security in the space as well. Hence the new phrase that is banded around of DevSecOps. If you can automate verification of security requirements as well as part of your build and release process, you're going to end up with a team that is very agile and able to deliver the business value very quickly. I don't have enough time to go into this in any detail today. That's one for a future session. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope it's giving you a quick introduction into the ideas around creating a cloud center of excellence and on some of the ways to move a workflow into the cloud. Claire, have there been any questions? There have, yeah, I've got a couple of questions here. I tell you what, if we move to the last slide, James, and I'm gonna talk about some next steps um, to give everybody a couple of minutes to um, to get some more questions in. Uh, so I mentioned at the beginning that this is the second in a series that James has done for us. The first one was debunking cloud myths. If you did miss it, the link is on the screen there. And finally, James mentioned, well, not finally, but James mentioned there that we didn't have time to, to touch on the, the DevOps culture. So the next in the series is going to be talking about how to foster a DevOps culture. And that is going to be in March. Um, again, fill in the survey at the end and it will ask you if you want a notification when the date is published. If you have any questions or you want to carry on the conversation, James's email address is there, so please do feel free to get in touch with James after the webinar. Um, I can see a couple of questions have come in here already. So, first question for you, James. On retain, retire, what kind of systems do companies decide to keep outside of the cloud and why? And there can be a couple of things that you might choose to say. And one of the one of the most basic reasons might be a data security issue. So you might, for example, have data that is so sensitive that you are not happy to put it into the cloud at this moment, or there may be regulation reasons why you have to keep it in on-premise. That can obviously be a big driver as to why you might choose to do it. Additionally, it, the easiest one is at the end of the day, you've presumably spent a large amount of money on your data center. Throwing it away is not necessarily the right thing to do straight away. So certain things that are working happily, take your time and move them when you need to and potentially just retain them in the data center until such time as the data center is being retired itself. Thank you. Right, one more question. Uh, most of the discussion has not been specific on a provider what are the main criteria when choosing one um there are a couple of things that might make you choose a provider the first of all is does it offer is it in the regulatory regime you need and is it accepted by any regulatory requirements you have in general the top three are all accepted by the regulators at this point in most of the financial markets and various other markets as well um, but it can also be you may have a specific service or skill set that they suit you for. Um, each of the three providers has things they are, the three big providers, AWS, Azure and GCP, have things they are skilled at and that may or may not suit your business. Um, GCP, for example, is generally viewed as one of the best for machine learning and AI. And if that's the area you want to go in, they may lead themselves to that one. AWS and Azure are generally quite equal in their offerings. They offer very similar things. And it may be that you have a specific tendency towards Microsoft technology because that's what you're using internally. And the migration path may be easier for you there. There are various different factors and each business needs to make its own assessment. Thanks, James. We have got uh, more questions here. However, I'm mindful that we did say this was going to finish at half past 10. So, uh, James, I will pass these to you afterwards. Perhaps you can answer these by email if you'd be happy to do that. Thank you to James for presenting. Thank you to you all for listening. And I hope you can join us early March for the next one on fostering a DevOps culture. So thank you all and have a great day.